Broadcasting from the city of sun and rain off the Atlantic Ocean in Boca Raton, Florida. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be, across the nation and around the world. I'm your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to my ChadDeckard.com podcast show. And today's recording date is October the 17th, 2012. My shows will cover how online and offline marketing and communications can grow your business, as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, the future of finance, entrepreneurism, and travel and adventure. Thank you for tuning in to my show. This is my fourth show as we begin this adventure exploring together with many great things to come. In my previous show, I went over uh, social media the elements of it, as well as planning for success to use it. In today's show, though, I have my guest, and his name is Steve Sims. Steve Sims has got a very interesting story because Steve makes dreams come true. All right, with me here today is our very first guest on my show, Steve Sims, and this fella makes dreams come true. So, uh, hello, Steve. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I've got a very interesting story, obviously, making a, a lot of people's dreams come true. So how about if you start off telling us a little bit about uh, like how and when and why you got into uh, making uh, people's dreams come true? Wow. Well, I can tell you straight away, we never ever planned anything. And I think it was because of that lack of planning that it became the kind of attitude that it is today. I was actually in a banking career and I really wanted to do well in this in the late 80s and I got moved to Hong Kong and when I was there uh, I arrived on the Saturday I was fired on the Tuesday basically I started hanging around clubs and parties trying to find out where my next job was going to be and found that I built up quite a good network of people one stage because of my size I'm quite a big lad I used to do some of the door work at some of these places I used to go to other venues and say, look, I've got my guy Chad coming over tomorrow. When he comes here, let him in. If he says to you this password, let him in. If he doesn't say the password, don't let him in. And one of the passwords we had was one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. It started off very, very innocently and naively. And then people were getting into different events. And then people said, look, I'm going to London. Do you know people in London that can get me into things? Do you know people in Monaco? Stard, Palm Beach. This was in the early 90s now, and my network just grew. I was very fortunate to be involved with Formula One in the late 90s. So I met a great amount of, of people then, both clients and great network opportunities for future relationships. In 2000, I moved over to America from Europe. And I think probably the big, the first big thing that we got was when we were asked to be the official concierge of the New York Fashion Week. Oh, wow. Yeah, that sounds really uh, exciting, I bet, when you got that. Yeah. Well, before that, we had been concierge of different events, ranging from the Cavalino Classic, the Davis Cup, uh, some local little things around Palm Beach and the East Coast, in America predominantly. And then we suddenly hit the big league, and we became the New York Fashion Week, the Grammys, Kentucky Derby. MTV style villas, villas the, um, uh, the FIA offshore powerboat series. So all of a sudden, all of these very large, monumental events uh, we were involved with. And I think the thing that really set us apart and did well for us was we never ever changed our attitude. We never changed the style. We were just in a different setting now. And it was cool. And I think we enjoyed it. And we came across like that. So I think that's why we did well in those arenas. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I, I noticed from looking at uh, your background and all that that you lived down here in uh, South Florida, like actually right up the road in uh, Delray Beach for a couple years. And I actually saw a couple pictures of you at the uh, the Ferrari show where they have all the Ferraris in front of the Breakers Hotel and throughout Palm Beach. Yep. So what do you have people, uh, you obviously make some people's dreams come true and uh, negotiate some deals to get some people in some of those cards that take a ride around, <laughs> yeah. right? We had, uh, we had some fun in the Palm Beach areas. We worked for the, uh, the Tennis Davis Cup up there in Delray, uh, the big art fairs they have, Polo. And we also ended up working for Mr. Donald Trump himself. So 
a lot of our clients wanted to do things like, well, how can I go to you know, one of Donald's parties or how can I drive a, a Ferrari around a racetrack or play tennis with a, one of the famous from the Everett tournament? And that's what we did. We just started to make these things happen. And before we knew it, we got the, the brand that we can pull these dreams off. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I've seen, uh, you know, growing up here in uh, Palm Beach County, uh, I guess I, I think I moved here in, what, 1983, and then obviously went to college and keep coming back. I'm in Boca Raton right now for the moment, but, you know, I jump around and live a lot of different places around the world. So it's it's interesting that you kind of have a similar story where I learned when I lived, like, in Spain for a few months that no matter where I went, I could carve out a niche and establish a uh, a network of individuals that were like, like-minded, like and I think that's what you've done is you've traveled throughout your career to various high-end, centrific places where, you know, the playboys play and really successful people hang out and obviously establishing networks and yeah, you know, people have obviously liked your service, and that's why you've been successful for so many years making uh, different people's dreams come true. Tell us, what is the most outrageous dream that you probably ever made come true to date? You know, there's probably a million questions you could have asked me that would have been easier than that. <laughs> well, my it job is to ask the hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> it, it all depends on who you speak to, okay? We've put civilians in space. We've sent people down to the Titanic. We turned uh, a guy into James Bond for a week in the south of France. Recently, we stuck a client in a Lotus Formula One car, and he raced around, well, not raced, but he drove the thing around a um, south of France racetrack. We stuck a client on the back of a MotoGP bike uh, ridden by uh, Randy Mamola. We stuck a guy on stage where he got to sing three songs with Journey live on stage in San Diego. Uh, we organized a lunch date for um, a client of ours in San Diego for the Trump family in New York. We've had people do walk-on roles of Hollywood blockbusters. It really depends on who you talk to. The most amazing thing may be the clients that we sent to Paris for the Paris Fashion Week. Yet it also may be a client that we sent down to uh, New Mexico who went swimming with whale sharks. So it really depends on you as to which one of those you're going to find sexy. Right, exactly. Whatever your taste is. I posted this question on my Facebook uh, page the other day, and, and it was funny. Actually, a lot of people had to kind of stop for a moment to think about what uh, their top of their bucket list, you'd say, of things that they want to do in their life. And uh, some of the responses I had were actually – not so much selfish, actually, great things. Some people just want to travel around the world and make people smile. I thought that was pretty noble. It wasn't about this or that. But uh, I, I was watching also a couple of your the videos on your YouTube channel, and it's very interesting. I, I really found uh, your, I would say, introduction to thebluefish.com. Very interesting taking the, the – you're kind of this fella that is like the Incredible Hawk mixed with – a biker dude meets Robin Leach, you know? And it's like you've got almost this Hollywood persona that precedes you. And it's almost like you fit just right in with all these rock star people that you deal with and making their dreams come true. Um, and that's what really attracted me is that you were, seemed like a very unique individual. And, you know, I had told you when we first uh, interacted for the first time, I said, if I didn't have the job that I'm doing now or doing what I'm doing, I would probably want to do your job because I know my brother and I are avid adventures always looking for the next thing that we're going to do and the most difficult thing in being able to do some of the things that we want to do is who do we contact to get that kind of thing done and that's where somebody like you with your experience knows how to kind of get those really unique tough spots that you know like i'd say people who want to do some extraordinary things in their life wouldn't know about how to go about doing it and that's where your professional skills and abilities come in so let me ask you this. You know, we're talking about everybody else's dreams and bucket list of things that come true. You know, what about you? What is somebody like you? I'm sure you've been on some of these adventures with some of your clients before. I mean, what's, what's, your, uh, what's your dream? You've probably made them all come true at this point. Um, my dream is pretty dull. My dream is to see my kids in a in a, a happy relationship and stable really? um i've spent you know i'm 46 years old 
I've spent the best part of 17 years doing this. Traveled around the world, thankfully, half a dozen times. Pray that I'll do it another half a dozen times. Done the red carpets, done the jumping out of planes, done the uh, driving fast cars, done the backstage uh, at fashion shows. I've done those things, and those are great. But for me, it's meeting true, honorable people, being able to, to share a whiskey, feed the family, and just <laughs> be able to walk down the road. It, I just I just love that kind of life. It, it's a case of I've been able to see the other side, shall we say, mm-hmm. and I can therefore live a very comfortable life knowing that I get what I want out of it and I'm happy. I'm a very happy, content person. That's great that you say that. And, you know, that says a lot. It's all about getting to the destination, but at the end of the day, it's really about the journey to the destination. You said something to me about how you choose clientele or what, what's your unique selling proposition that sets you apart from anyone else? Well, for a start, we handle anything from booking someone an overnight in Boston to you know shoving them around sharks off of Bali. So we do the whole gamut. We're just well known for doing the amazing stuff. Um, but I think the thing that's really set us apart, and it really shouldn't, and this kind of amazes me that this is even a talking point, we want clients that are truthful, honorable, and just have a lust for life. And you'll be surprised how hard it is with those first two elements. And so what we did was we stuck a video on our website. It's on thebluefish.com forward slash application. And we showed the video on there. And believe it or not, we did this video as a bit of a joke. And it took off and we sent it out to a few people. And then eventually we actually posted it. And we said, look, you're going to apply online. We're therefore going to get your details and we're going to arrange a time to phone you up. You can't pay online. You're not buying a book or ordering flowers. So we want to talk to you to understand that we're not wasting your 2,500 bucks and we're not wasting our time. But we want to make sure that we're the correct fit. So we phone you up. We have a chat, and in the video, I jokingly say, we work out, work, work it out whether or not we even like you. People kind of came back and went, oh, you can't say that, you can't say that. But you'll be amazed at the amount of people that actually phoned up and almost challenged that. And we would have people that applied, and then we would reach out, and when can we talk? They would give us a time, we'd phone them up, and they'd say, right, so you're going to work out if I'm good enough for you, are you? Or you're going to let me know if we, you like me. And it was almost a challenging point, and it broke the ice. And so we never got those people that were, I, don't, I want to be careful how I say this, we never got those insecure people. We got those people that went, hey, I want the best. Mm-hmm. I want someone to be able to do the absolute best. And Bluefish has a little bit of arrogance, I hope not too much, but it has mountains of attitude. And we get it done. And before you go anywhere, we know that it's perfect because we plan everything as though it's for us. So we think if we speak with you, Chad, and we can communicate and we can get on and we'd be happy to stand in a bar and share a whiskey, then, hey, I can work with you forever. But if I have trouble even having that first few minute conversation because, you know, you want to puff your chest on, you know, what company you're the head of of, uh, or how many people you boss around every day or try to impress me because of your stamp collection, then uh, maybe we're not going to get on. So what's the point? Right, exactly. I say that all the time. Choose your customers wisely because they could uh, become your ni- worst nightmare if you, if you don't. There are, there are millions of people in the world, okay? Billions of people. I don't know the exact figure. I'm sure there's enough that you can work with out of those billions that you get on with. You've just got to try and find them. Mm-hmm. So you, you would say that most of the time when you find them, you've established such a good network now that people actually just find the bluefish like I found you. Yeah, we're, we're very fortunate there. And it also is a double-edged sword. Um, most of our clients come from clients that already use us and go, hey, you need something, you want to contact this team. We have uh, about seven other offices worldwide. And so we've grown rather well. 
and we only work with those people that we can work with. And so that reputation goes on. And then someone says, well, look, you reckon you're good. Can you do this? We've done so much now that we have a good pedigree. We have a good reputation of what we have achieved, what we can achieve, and we have proof. And if you phone me up and you say, hey, I want to go and sing with this rock star, or I want to go and have a travel itinerary planned for me in Amalfi, Ravello, and Positano, or I want to do something just incredibly insane, then nine times out of ten, I can say, look, we can plan this. Why don't I put you in touch with Reggie? Because Reggie did this. And you guys can talk about how well we did with it. And so then the next time you'll phone me up, you'll realize that we actually do what we say we can do. And that pedigree works well for us. Great, great. So could you tell our listeners uh, how they could actually get a hold of you? Yeah, there's, uh, there's two websites. There's one called thebluefish.com. That's if they're interested in a complete bespoke concierge. We are the best of the best and, you know, arrogant, but the website will, will prove that and the service will just uh, make you a loyal follower on that. We also have a website called tasteofblue.net uh, for those people that don't want to be members but just want to do something exciting, whether it be go to the, the new premiere of the James Bond movie or jump out of a plane or go shark diving or drive a Formula One car. We've got all of our experiences, luxury and experiential, on that website. So two websites, thebluefish.com and tasteofblue.net. Let me ask you this. I do have one last question for my listeners who uh, had sent me an email here, and they asked me uh, whether or not you could make it happen as far as World Cup soccer coming up in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Could you get them on the field and play with the team? <laughs> <laughs> Join the game, no. Um, oh, no. Join other parts. And again, b before we even go into it, being the biggest cynic in the world, it all comes down to how fat you check. Uh, you know, exactly. There is definitely, put it this way, a simple answer, I can make it happen if you can afford it. I certainly have the connections that can pull it off. Awesome. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in and listening with me. I have Steve Sims. Uh, from thebluefish.com. 